Hi, and this is Freddy Club Gardening, and today we're going to show you how to plant a spare, a pear tree and do, and I do an espalier. Espalier, yep, there's a pear tree. This is actually a dwarf series, uh, Bartlett pear. Got it at a uh, home center. Bartlett pear. It doesn't matter what the home center I got it from, but uh, we are going to plant it, so we'll show you how we're going to plant it. And then, we've never done a spalier before, so we're going to try it. Um, simply because I want to train the tree on this fence. I don't want it growing up and, you know, all over the place like a tree usually does. Um, we're just going to go... A spalier means... It's, it's French. It goes back to like the 1600s or something like that, I think. Um, basically, we're going to train the tree to grow instead of uh, vertically, instead of everything going up it's going to grow more horizontal so that um, everything is easy to reach and there's a couple benefits to it there might be some uh, not so good things about it too I guess from what some people say but I really don't care uh, we're going to give it a whirl so we're going to start with a normal pear tree that's not espaliate because that's expensive as all get out when you buy it like that so we're just going to try this ourselves uh, most of the branches that you see on here now will be gone shortly. We're going to try to prune that all out. I'll show you how I do that. We're only going to keep a few and the rest will be gone. The first thing that we want to do, uh, that I'm going to do, is uh, dig my hole. Well, the first thing I did actually was select my location. And uh, I chose to be right in front of, right between those two fence posts because that's going to help me when I have to run wires. I'll show you how to do that too so that the tree can go on it. Rachel, pretend you're the tree. Right there. Rachel's the tree. <laughs> um, and then eventually what we'll do is put another one over on this other side here. I think where that lily is. Put another pear tree. So, you know, it, it's what I'm doing actually is being thought about for a change. Anyways, um, one thing I might have in the way is that's actually um, a hibiscus it's bush. Grow. It'll grow. It'll get probably, I don't know, this tall off the ground. I'm, I'm showing you about three feet. I know it's hard for you to gauge that depth, but it we're about three dead, feet. So grow. we're going to start that hole now. Um, I'm looking at my root ball. Uh, I'm going to go with the tree. I will probably leave this burlap on there, although I will pull these little nails that are holding it together out, and then I'll take a knife and probably cut some of this away. Because burlap is good. Burlap's not bad at all. Um, and so what we want to do <coughs> is look at the uh, root ball here. <coughs> it's about a foot wide. So that means I want to go twice as wide with the width of my burlap ball. So I'm going to have about six inches. I'll probably do about eight inches uh, extra on each side. Mm. And then what I'll do is go, they call for twice as deep, but I'll go maybe one and a half. I don't okay. necessarily subscribe to that twice as deep thing because I think that um, when, the, when the earth settles that you've dug, it's going to drop down the root ball and then it becomes too low. And uh, if you have a plant too low, it won't grow. It won't grow at all. If it's too high, it'll die. So mm -hmm. uh, we're going to start that hole, and I'll show you. Well, you don't need to see it being dug, uh, but we will show you afterwards just what I'm talking about. Okay, this is one of the benefits, actually, to having a kid that you can boss around. Now, if this you're a, sucks. what? Oh, now if you're a kid. What's that, Rachel? Now, if you're a kid, this is one of one of the be benefits because you can pretend not, that you don't know what to do. Like, oh, dad, I don't know how to shovel. Although you really do, you could just say, and then you could just have your, your parent do it, and then say, and then you could go inside and play your games. <laughs> That's just one of the awesome ideas. Okay, so our hole is dug, our plant is in there. What I'm going to do is cut some of the burlap off the top here, off the top of the root ball, and 
This is also when you're going to want to select the best positioning for your plant, for your tree. Um, obviously we won't be able to turn it or move it once it's filled. So we're going to want to pick that <clears throat> best way to do it now. So let me uh, pick that, fill it, and then I'll show you what I did and why. All right, so we're getting ready now to uh, finish backfilling. <clears throat> what I did was I backfilled it about halfway, and then I just kind of went lightly stepped the dirt in. Um, you know, there's this plant came from a nursery, a plant about a home center, but uh, this, all this green pellet stuff that's on here, that's all uh, fertilizer pellets. I guess it's slow release fertilizer, probably. Um, I'm not going to put any fertilizer on this plant whatsoever. I think it's going to be just fine. There's a lot of it there. Um, I mixed a little bit of compost into the soil that's here. I um, guess it's going to be your own judgment whether you should fertilize or not. But if you're getting a plant, generally, uh, if it's from a nursery or a home center, uh, chances are it's already pretty fertilized. They they you know keep a lot of fur on those fertilizer on those pots and clay root balls or whatever it's coming in so I don't really go too crazy fertilizing for a while okay another thing I wanted to point out real quick um, <clears throat> I got the plant halfway full so I mean halfway backfilled so I'm just gonna throw some water into here and now that's gonna help me get better water penetration deeper penetration to the roots and that's also gonna help me to settle uh, have the soil settle so I'm good to go Okay, the pear tree is now planted. Uh, that's just fine. Um, I have selected what would be called the face of it, so that's how the plant is in. I've checked it to make sure that it's it's straight, you know, vertical. It's not leaning way like this or like that or anything. Um, feeling pretty good about that. So um, I'm sorry if this is hard to see. You know, I mean, I really don't have any other backdrop besides the fence that this is on. So. Um, I've chosen, and I hope I'm right, because like I said, I've never really done this before, but I'm pretty sure I'm correct. Um, this is going to be one of my branches that'll stay, and we'll train that one over. Then it would make sense for this one right here to stay. Um, this one that's growing out toward me is going to go. That's out of there. Um, and then we'll look at... What else to prune off? I'll probably keep, since this is going to be down here, I would want to, I do believe, cut what would be this one. There's not a huge space here. So I can probably cut what would be this plant, uh, this branch, and then I'll take this other one up here and I'll make that go over that way. Um, there's a branch in here that's damaged you can see it's kind of scabbed maybe you can see that right there I don't know if you can right there scabbed so that puppy's out of here and then I've got two large leads our main stems I guess it would be coming off of this tree I don't want that so one of them has to go and uh, it'll be the one closest to me so I'm gonna prune this puppy up a little bit and uh, probably shock the snot out of everybody when you see it again because there's not going to be much left but uh, that's kind of what we want. Alright so we're done with our exfoliate project and here's what it should look like. Here's what it is. Yeah I know it's difficult to see but that's because <coughs> this thing, this tree isn't leafed out and uh, it's on a gray, gray cedar fence so of course it's hard to see but uh, what I did was I uh, kind of measured up, half measured anyways, from uh, the ground up to where the first stem was and then I figured, I, I tried to do a test bend to see where I would need to put my wire. So this is a 14 gauge galvanized wire which I fastened to my fence post with a, uh, that's like an eye hook and then um, I just kind of wound the wire around there and then uh, on the other end it has what's called a turnbuckle what that does is it allows me over time to uh, well turn it and uh, that tightens up or keeps the line taut so that it's nice and uh, sturdy so we're good to go with that um, I gently bent 
my branches. I maybe should have shown that part, but really it's it's just being gentle and bending a branch. And then I used some of the green stretchable gardener's, uh, well, it's plastic. I could have used, here I used a little bit of rope because that was a tougher branch to bend. Earlier I had told you that this tree had the two leaders. Can you remember that part where I showed you there was two leaders coming up like this and that I was going to eliminate one? I think I said the one that was closest to me, which would have been this one right here. Uh, as it turned out, when I showed you earlier, the branch that was damaged, it was kind of scabbed up. It was this one here, I believe. Um, I had to eliminate that. That would have left me with just one branch on this side of the plant and it would have been pretty off balance. So what I'm trying to do, I guess, is rebalance the plant and uh, save one branch that'll hopefully, uh, well that'll obviously increase my yield of fruit and so forth. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. I'm hoping that it doesn't take a whole bunch of the uh, tree's progress away as far as growing. So. Uh, we'll figure things out as we go along, but this is the project, how it came out, and uh, as I said, you know, I haven't done this before, I'm not an expert, but this is pretty much in tune with everything that I've seen online and everything that I've read um, from books and, and uh, other YouTube videos and um, whatever else I could find for information. So we're pretty good to go with that. One thing I did do, um, which I didn't mention, the tree was a little unstable and I wanted to pull it closer to the fence line. I didn't have another um, eye, so I just took some twine here and um, I pounded a nail into this piece of wood so um, I could kind of use that to anchor the tree. I probably don't need it now because these branches are all <coughs> tied up to the wires, but I used it earlier to kind of help me stabilize the tree. I'll leave it there for now. Um, and see if the tree's okay. If it doesn't shift, then I'll then I'll get rid of it. Thanks again for watching.